huge story to show you. It's a story about just how effective we are here at The Rebel when we have your help to investigate the secretive NDP, but it's also a story about the dereliction of duty by the mainstream media here in Alberta. I just received back some documents that we got through freedom of information requests into the Alberta government, and I'll talk about those documents in just a second. But first, do you remember last year when I did a story about the water bomber contracts here in Alberta in the lead up to the Wood Buffalo wildfire that swept into Fort McMurray in the spring? My story revealed that NDP cuts to the wildfire budget caused such confusion and chaos in the Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry that the government had to cancel every single water bomber contract in the entire province just 10 days before fire swept into Fort McMurray. And they were all retendered just two days before fire hit town. The government had originally tried to rewrite those contracts to be shorter in length to try to save money because of budget cuts. But that led to a cascade of screw-ups. The rewritten contracts had winter dates for spring and summer firefighting seasons. Those contracts had no performance guarantees, as in you didn't actually have to fight a fire to get paid to fight a fire. And by the time the NDP cancelled those contracts and tried to start from scratch in an attempt to fix their big huge mess, some water bomber companies, like the one that owns the world's largest water bomber, the Martin Mars, well, they weren't available to fight the fire. And the companies that were available they had to sign non-disclosure agreements so that they didn't go public with just how badly the NDP had bungled the whole works. It was a massive scoop and hugely devastating for the NDP and even though those documents cost $4,000 to get access to, we published them on our Rebel website so that the mainstream media could actually do their jobs and cover the story too. But predictably, they did not. Now, back to those other documents. I was following up on my original story with another round of freedom of information requests. I wanted to know how the NDP reacted to the bombshell story about the water bombers. So I asked the government to provide copies of any documents including emails, memos, reports, media lines, question and answers, text or instant messages, Blackberry pins, briefing notes, etc. regarding the water bomber contracts and I changed the time frame this time to around the time my story broke, up until November 9th, 2016. And I happily learned in the documents I got back that the NDP were shaken and panicked by my story, and that they even were getting pushback. They were being hammered by regular Albertans who wanted answers. Let me show you the NDP freak out about our water bomber investigation in these few emails here. Here is Agriculture and Forestry Minister O'Neill Carlier's press secretary in an email asking for lines about how to respond to my story. Hello, can we please get some lines regarding water bomber contract as well as the facts? Please see story. And then he kindly links to my story. And here is the response to that request from the press secretary, which basically confirms everything we said while trying to explain that they just made some errors in writing the water bomber contracts, like the performance guarantee not being in the contract, the casual contract postings not being there. Here it reads, reviewed the rebel video and have identified eight points for additional information. And then they list everything I included in the story. So we didn't get anything wrong in the story. The NDP just wanted to think it wasn't a big deal that anybody should actually be worried about. But here's my favorite part the angry Albertans who called and emailed the, the government to admonish them for charging us $4,000 to get access to water bomber info. Just look at this. The bureaucrats are talking about a phone call someone placed to the ministry. And that person asked questions about the story and quote, then asked why Rebel Media was charged $4,000 for the information. I explained that it was the freedom of information process and he should contact them to get a better explanation. Before we hung up, the person requested that the information I shared be faxed to him, which I did." End quote. So the NDP blame us for paying the fee or maybe for going public with the amount of the fee or for asking questions at all. I can't really tell. It's such a crazy lame deflection, but really, what else could the NDP do? There is no excuse for charging us that kind of money, except to keep our prying eyeballs away from seeing it. 
The water bomber story we broke sent the NDP scrambling. They were frantic and scared, trying to come up with talking points and answers. It was a big deal and the NDP knew it. Angry Albertans knew it. And they let the NDP know. But the mainstream media ignored it. Why? You see, I used to give them the benefit of the doubt. I used to think the media had bad instincts about what is important to everyday Albertans. The rig hands, the farmers, the small business people, the families just struggling to get by because the mainstream media aren't surrounded by those people every day the way I am. And maybe that is still a reason, but I don't think it's the whole reason the media refused to cover one of the biggest stories on the Rebel this year, even though I did all the work for them already. Here's my theory. I think there are two reasons why the media turned a blind eye to the water bomber story, a story people clearly wanted answers to. The first reason is obvious. The media refused to cover the water bomber story because we broke it. The media resents us here at The Rebel. You can tell in the breathless way they write article after article about us, how they try to bully politicians to stay away from us, how they smear and attack our supporters and our fans. We are the little online upstart that could. I think the mainstream media is a little jealous of us, of how we can dig up the truth and grow and grow and gain support while they experience round after round of layoffs and never realizing it's their own fault for not covering stories Albertans want to know about. And that brings me to my second reason. With all those layoffs in the mainstream media, there is only one place hiring unemployed journalists. Guess where that is? That's the Alberta government. They've hired about 20 recently unemployed journalists, including Heather Boyd. That's the woman who wrote the report on me being removed from the legislature by an armed sheriff. So when you read a glowing article about how it's perfectly okay for Rachel Notley to chase away investment with crazy taxes and spend away your children's future, remember, that's not just an article. It's a cover letter for a job with the government. It's an insurance policy for that journalist in case of another round of layoffs. And that's why our independent journalism here at The Rebel is just so important. No one else is asking these questions. Now, if you can help to cover our cost to file my persistent access to information requests, you could donate at whatissheHiding.ca. For the Rebel.media, I'm Sheila Gunreed. To see all of my stories and all of our great Canadian content that the government doesn't make you pay for, be sure to subscribe to our Rebel Canada YouTube page.